What's up, Street Scores family? It's your boy Rico, bringing y'all the next film session, Darius Geis. And most of the film I will show y'all will be from 2016 because injuries hindered him until pretty much the end of the season, the bowl game. And there's definitely proof that he bounced back to his 2016 form in 2017. So don't think that he can't be this in the future. But I just wanted to give y'all 2016 film to see when he was at his best. An ACL injury can be serious, but I hope he can bounce back like he did late in the 2017 season season from his previous leg injury but we'll have to see but let's get into this film session first of all shouts out to redskins run 21 you can see his name right here here's his channel right here great youtube and twitter page go check them out and follow them on both websites but back to the film session. Just watch how Geis uses his 224 pounds to punish defenders, especially those at the next level. This poor DB didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Why Geis do buddy like that? I felt like it was only right to start the film session off with this. Good job by Geis with getting low and leading with his shoulders so you won't get penalized. But why he had to do buddy like that? And what's even better is that Geis runs with this kind of power every game, every play angry runner and with all of that power people gotta expect that he can't be brought down by angle tacklers guys gets a simple catch out of the backfield behind a line of scrimmage and then he takes the ball and blesses the quarterback stats the first louisville defender attempts to make a angle tackle and it has no chance of bringing guys down guys has to be tackled square up not from the side like this and then from there after easily escaping this tackle he just does what he does and makes plays scrapping up some grown man yard you can see it from another view this tackle was not squared up enough and then everybody else just struggled to bring down this grown man and his power doesn't diminish over time he punishes people as games get late three minutes left in the fourth quarter and he's still out here punishing people look at this angry run i know alabama is tired of getting ran over by guys all game and what does guys do not let up and beat them up some more he is out here laying down some contact on these defenders. They're going to be sore the next day after spending 30 minutes tackling this man. As he pounds people throughout the game, it wears the defense down, which leads to bigger plays in the run game as the game progresses. And even at the end of the game, he is running people over, which makes closing the game as an opposing defense not fun at all. He does this game to game too. Next is his elite balance after contact, and I'm gonna show y'all two examples of those. As he sets up blocks and found a hole to shoot through, a Louisville defender came from behind the crowd to surprise Geis and laid a pretty hard hit on him. Geis ate the hit, kept his balance and his feet churning and turned a one yard loss into a five, maybe six yard gain. His balance is unmatched and this what allows him to get more out of dark situations than most running backs. These types of plays are deflating to a defense and can physically and mentally wear them down as the game progresses. Just when you think you have Geis right here, you don't. And he's carrying the ball for another five, six yards. And here's the second and final clip I'm gonna show as an example of his elite balance after contact. Watch as he runs through the teeth of the defense, spins out of a defender's grasp, and looks to lose almost no speed. His great balance allowed him to minimize any stumble and keep going. And then another defender tries to jump on his back and it was to no avail. Geis is too powerful and possesses too much balance for him to be tackled like this. This was unfair. One thing that I really like about Geis is that he always falls forward. It's a small and simple trait to have, but it can be the difference between zero yards and two yard gains. Those extra yards add up and can also tip the scale in third and two towards a first down rather than a fourth and short. I also like how he turns in these situations right here. I'm talking about this little turn right here. It not only allows him to get out of a defender's grasp and gain an extra yard or two, but it also gets him out of harm's way when another defender comes to attack him from a direction Geis may not be aware of. I love the fact that this is a habit for him, second nature. You see him do this little spin right there a lot, and it's a small thing, but it helps a lot. But again, just to drive it through y'all head, Geis is the always falls forward type of running back. That guy has a square up tackle against him, and Geis still manages to fight for another yard, almost two. In the same game, Geis does a great job of following his blocks to get the most out of a little, and then fight for extra yards. He does a nice job of following his blocks, gets the most out of a little, 
But then even after he is only able to scrap up one yard before a multitude of contact from several defenders, he fights and pushes the pile, then pulls against the resistance behind him for another three yards. Three yards may not sound like a lot, but three yards can make a huge difference in this game of inches. And that there was a grown man three yards that he fought for. He earned every single yard. He didn't fall until the whistle was blown and got out of his beast mode. Geis is also a certified goal line monster. I like how he was decisive with picking where he wanted to attack, then bursted into the contact, ate it, kept his balance, and then kept turning his feet, fighting. Look how decisive he was for which hole he was about to go into. Nice little cut, burst through, eats the contact, keeps his feet churning, and does that spin move I talked about earlier, that little spin, that spin right there is super underrated and then he even finished standing up he never got brought down for the touchdown crazy guys just has a knack for converting on third and short or fourth and shorts whichever one you want to pick anytime you need a short amount of yards you can depend on guys to get it guys is fully aware that he needs to pick up one yard and even though right here and even though his left guard gets bullied into the backfield and there are defenders waiting for him at the line of scrimmage he bursts through and picks up more than enough yards to get the first down. Geis is aware, decisive, and powerful. He's running this way, sees his left guard is getting demolished, cuts to the right, gets low, and bursts through the defense. Right through the teeth of it too. More than enough for a first down. Geis always keeps his feet churning, no matter how much opposing force is going against him. And him keeping his feet churning allows him to do magic tricks like this. He's a magician, David Blaine, look at this. Where did he come from? How is he still up? He looks swallowed up, he disappears, and out of nowhere, he just springs out of it, magically appears unharmed, and turns a no gain into a four yard gain. And it's easy to point out the reason why. He keeps his feet churning right here, and as the defense thinks they have him, he just appears on the other end unscathed. He keeps his feet moving through contact. And these types of plays can be lifesavers when we start off with horrible field position, for example, like right here. Starting from within their own eight yard line, just imagine if they were on the two yard line and they didn't want to get a safety. They just need any yards to be able to breathe. And Geis does this. This is what he can do at the NFL level two for the Redskins. No longer will we be backed into our own end zone and fear for our life that we might give up a safety. We don't have to pressure Alex Smith into throwing the ball because Geis can just run it up the gut and gain us a few yards to give us some breathing room. Now I know what the traits I've been showing y'all so far basically describe a Marshawn Lynch, but he's more than that. But he got some speed and burst to him. At 5'11", 224 pounds, he should not be moving like this. But watch, as he made one small cut and then he burst through the hole, they weren't ready for him to burst through that hole like that. He got the ball, made a small cut, burst through, and all of these Louisville defenders have a bad angle because they thought they could catch him sooner. They didn't expect him to have that much speed and go right past him. It almost looks as if he's gliding through the defense for a nine yard gain on a second and seven. This would not be nine yards for every running back. There's a defender here, two right here, two on their way from this side. But once he saw the hole right here, he knew he was gonna be able to burst through before the defense could get in his way and make an earlier stop. They had to tackle him by the ankles. He might've gotten a touchdown. But hold on now. He's not just a big body with some speed and some burst. He's also agile. With him being 224 pounds, he should not be able to do this right here to a defender. Look at that. And then after the juke move to have the acceleration and burst to get another few yards before taking out of bounds. With him being 224 pounds, you wouldn't expect him to be so shifty, but he has a knack for making people miss when he needs to. This Louisville DB is in perfect position right here for an open field tackle. Looks like he has a good chance of stopping Geis. He either has to make a great open field tackle or at least keep Geis to the inside so his teammates can come and help from over here. But Geis wasn't feeling either of those ideas, and so he decided he was getting to that edge. He set up a hard fake back inside, and it had Buddy from Louisville looking crazy once Geis bounced back outside. The DB had no chance, and Geis was able to pick up an extra five yards just purely off his ability to make people miss. Rather than just running people over like a Marshawn Lynch, he has his choice of running people over or doing this to him. He's just very dynamic. 
He's definitely not in the same box as Marshawn Lynch. He's more than that. Now, Marshawn Lynch is my boy. One of my favorite athletes, period, across any sport. But there's things that Geis can do that he couldn't. The agility that Geis has just seems like something that Chris Thompson should be able to do. Look at this. Whoo! Again, for his build and power, it's unbelievable how agile he is to make people miss like this. And not only to make people miss, but also to accelerate back to full speed quick enough to get the first down. His combination of speed, quickness, and power is just unfair for defenses. Whoop! And then just burst off and get to the first down. I mean, after this juke move, you think it would take him a long time for him to get enough speed for these defenders that should easily be able to cut him off. They have to go the distance of two yards. Geis has to go about five or six. And Geis beats them there. This is the stuff I'm talking about, people. He's not just power. He could do this to a defense. Avoid some of them hits instead of just running this man over. Juke him out, avoid another hit, and prolong his running back career. Now, when I say Geis has some speed, I mean speed speed, home run speed. Like most of the clips that I've been showing y'all, they're from the Louisville game. He's just been running people over and punishing them all game. And then well into the third quarter, look at this home run run that he hits them with. Burst, and he's gone. They're not catching him. People trying to catch him from behind. He's faster than you. He's not just outrunning defensive linemen and linebackers. These are DBs he's outrunning at this point. Number 22 is not going to catch him. It's almost self-explanatory, but if he gets a big hole, he's explosive enough to break one all the way to the crib. He's not just a powerful back that will get caught from behind once he's ahead of everybody. He is gone. And it all started with this bounce cut he made right here to position himself to accelerate burst through the hole and be gone thank goodness for this angle because you can't really see the cut from the other angle this cut right here is what made it all happen but we're just here right now for this home run speed now with all of these physical tools you got to be like there's no way he can also mentally be ahead of where he's supposed to be but he is he is patient he sets up blocks and follows them very well he's decisive at the line at this point right here there's no hole for him to run through but he stays patient lets them develop and then burst through picking up a first down there is no exact lane for him to run through but he moves at a steady pace waiting for it to open and as soon as he gets that crease he is gone a lot of running backs would have just ran right into the back of one of these offensive linemen and rushed it. But he had enough patience to wait for the hole to fully develop. Some running backs might have the patience to do this, but not all of them have the athleticism to fight through it and then also burst ahead and carry a defensive lineman for another three yards. He is a great cutter with great footwork. Look at the footwork that is required to make this play look so easy. He did three cuts and then burst open for a home run touchdown. Let me slow it down so y'all can see the cuts I'm talking about. He's handed the ball. He sees where he's supposed to be running is clogged up. He cuts out, cuts back in, cuts out again, and now he's gone. Doesn't look as amazing in slow motion, but when you string it all together at real life speed, the footwork just looks crazy. And the fact that he didn't lose his balance or any speed during it, not at any point at any cut did he ever come to a complete stop. He barely lost any momentum and had the acceleration to break off once he had space. This is great footwork and great cutting right here, y'all. He's not just some power back. He can finesse his way through some traffic and take off. With as simple as this is, I included this clip so people can get an idea how we might use them in goal line situations. With Geist being such a powerful runner, defenses will have no choice but to allocate resources towards stopping the run. And when they do, we can send Geis out in the flat and let him get a touchdown through the air like this. He didn't get the knee down, but he did get both of his feet down, even though you only need one in college. I like the awareness from a running back to catch the ball and get both his feet inbound. But again, I reiterate, this is just to show y'all an idea of how we may use him in goal line situations. Switch it up from that heavy run to a nice little flat route for him to go out and make a catch like this. Having a linebacker trying to guard Geis in space. Now we don't have to just only throw the ball to him in goal line situations. We can throw the ball to him and let him make things happen in space. Watch as he goes into the flat, catches the ball smoothly, which gives him time to turn around and assess what's going on. If he would have bobbled the ball 
or some other randomness like running backs do while they're trying to catch the ball in the move, that he would have been tackled in the backfield for sure. But not only does he catch the ball smoothly, but he gets turned around very quickly. And also, he is patient enough to let his blocker block and is quick enough to burst by both of the defenders when the time is perfect. And then from there, he does what he does and carries another grown man on his back for a few more yards after contact. There's a lot of film out there of guys catching the ball behind a line of scrimmage, at it or not far in front of it, and getting a good chunk of yards from it, if it's not a first down. Redskins just give him the ball in space however y'all can and let him make magic. Now Geis is not only good at running the ball and catching the ball, but he also has the potential to protect Alex Smith when called to do so. Geis is to the right of the quarterback and I like how he puts himself out there for this block. He is not afraid of contact and pass protection. Now I don't like these cut blocks. I want him to stand up and complete a normal block, but I do appreciate that he was willing to get his hands dirty to give his quarterback time to throw the ball. Now this is more like it. Good job by Geist to step up and make the type of block I want from him. Not only did he do the basic necessity of getting in the way, but he also laid a nice hit on the edge rusher taking the edge rusher out of the play completely. Now to be real, he doesn't block like this all the time, but I wanted to show y'all evidence that he can be an effective blocker at the running back position. He definitely has the build for it. This is from 2016, and in 2017, his blocks looked like this way more often, so I'm happy he improved on it. And with coaching at the NFL level, I'm definitely expecting this out of him more often and more consistently. He didn't do it a lot in 2016, but he started to get the hang of it in 2017, and I'm expecting him to do it a lot in 2019. Now I just want to show y'all two examples of him combining several of the skills I've previously shown y'all throughout this film session and turning them into highlight plays. First of all, I like how this Louisville defender ended up not posing the threat, but Guy still wrapped up the ball with two hands just in case if there was contact in order to avoid the fumble. Good second nature habits. And then he makes a vicious cut in between four Louisville defenders and then bursts through and carries four Louisville defenders for an extra five, maybe six yards. This is not an eight yard game for most backs. Powerful backs don't normally have the ability to cuss and burst like that, and speedy shifty backs would not have gotten that extra five or six yards Geis managed to carry all of them defenders for. This is one of them plays that Geis is the only player on our roster that could have made this play happen. Jukes, shifty, powerful, nice game. This is one of my favorite plays from him. Cutting, awareness, balance, and speed. I gotta break it down. But look at this run. They are not catching him. First, he cuts to the inside, then back out. Not a lot of backs can do that, especially with that much leg power. And after doing those cuts, he had the awareness to see the human speed bump in his way. Jumps over him with excellent balance. Doesn't lose any speed after jumping. Takes off. Bursts through the big hole provided by his offensive line. And then has the home run speed to turn on the Jets and leave everybody behind for a 96 yard touchdown. Plain and simple, there's not a lot of running backs that can take a second and 11 on his own four yard line and turn it into a touchdown. Speed is not enough. You gotta be able to cut, you gotta have some running back vision, you gotta have balance, just in case random human sized obstacles get in the way for no reason. They drill for situations like this in practice with human sized speed bumps, but it's another thing to actually do it in the game, especially after cutting. And then the burst through, and outrun this DB that was ahead of him, it's not fair. At 224 pounds, he should not be able to do this type of stuff. This man is filthy with it. <laughs> right here, it looked like he pressed the dive button too early on Madden and just fell down. Mm. Now, as I always say, this wouldn't be a real film session if I didn't point out some negatives. One big negative for him is that he needs to work on not dropping his head as a weapon. Y'all saw that right there? I'll slow it down. This is a great run from him until he decides to duck his head right here. Why is he leading with the crown of his head? I like that he attempted to get low, but he's got to get lower and not use his head as a weapon. Not only can this be penalized, but it can also be dangerous. He can hurt himself or the opposing player and also cost us 15 yards in 2019. Now he hasn't done this enough for it to be considered a habit, but it's also not rare enough for this to be considered an accident. He sometimes puts his head down and I'm pretty sure he's worked on this over the off season with how once you get to the NFL, they analyze and improve on the most minute details but I can't assume anything 
I gotta look at the tape and tell it how it is. And I just don't like this because I've seen this a multitude of times. But it's very fixable. Now with me being so heavily invested into Darius Geis and the hope I put behind him to turn this franchise into a consistent winning franchise, I need him to avoid taking hits. I know he's a bully. He can run anybody over on the defense. But sometimes you should just look to avoid a hit when possible. I mean, I love his willingness to take on hits and get extra yards. But there are times like this where he has plenty of space to make the defender in front of him miss. But in Instead, he decided to run him over, and there was some head-to-head -head contact as a consequence. These are the type of plays that make my heart skip a beat every time I see him do it when I was watching this film session. This could have been avoidable with one of those nasty, shifty, juke moves that he has in his arsenal that I've shown y'all he can do. It doesn't look like much, and he shook it off like nothing happened, but these hits add up, y'all. It's not the age of the running back, it's the amount of hits he takes that make up the mileage of the running back. And if he has a chance right here to hit this man with a filthy juke move, juke outside and come back inside, or just immediately cut outside, leave this man in the dust and go. You don't have to take on this helmet to helmet contact right here. Geis also has the occasional drop pass. He's lined up in the slot, runs a flat route, and the quarterback just barely gets it past the defender. Puts the ball on the money for Geis, and he just simply drops it. Now, it looks like the defender may have affected it and made it harder to catch. But from this angle right here, you can see that he did not come in contact with the ball at all, and it landed right in Geis' chest. This was a very catchable ball. It may not be the easiest catch for a running back, Running away from the ball, having to turn around and catch it. But it did hit him in the chest, and you got to catch these. But he's a running back. He can work on this and become a premier catching running back if he applies himself. And lastly, he needs to improve on his pass protection technique. I've shown y'all clips of him being successful, and I've also told y'all that he has improved since 2016. It has a lot of time to improve by 2019. But, like I said, after take what's on the film, and analyze what I see. And on plays like this, I don't know what that block was. Guys right here just laid down in front of him. I mean, and it kind of worked, but I don't like it. Not one bit. Now, even though this type of block worked earlier, I did mention that I do not like these type of blocks because they do not work consistently. Guys is right here. And he literally just lays down and becomes a human speed bump. This is a perfect example of why I emphasize he needs to stand up and make a technical block. Because you want to Call of Duty dolphin dive at the defensive lineman's legs, your quarterback is dead meat. The guy he went to go block was barely affected, slowed him down half a second, still almost got to the quarterback. If he would have just kept his head up and blocked this man straight on, it could have worked. As powerful as Geis is and he can carry somebody that size on his back while he's running for three more yards, he should be able to hold his own when blocking this man. He, it may not be the greatest block, but at least it will occupy him better than that just one inch of a nudge backwards that he sent. And as a last example, Geis, I want you to keep your head up and block this man with your hands, not your head and your shoulder. Block this man with technique. It looks like Geis is trying to run through that man to convert a fourth and goal. This not only was not the most effective technique, but it also can be dangerous. There could have been head-to-head -head contact, could have been a hard collision, and Geis could have gotten concussed. And just like I said earlier with avoiding hits and taking hits to the head, especially don't get them while blocking. Now for me to summarize the film session, starting with the positives. Very powerful can run people over, will not be tackled by angled tacklers. He always fights for more yards and always falls forward. Third and one is his bread and butter. Goal line is where he really shows his worth, and his power does not diminish throughout a game. So as he's wearing down a defense over time, he's still going, and if anything, gets stronger and faster. He really starts to run people over as games get late. The ultimate shoe clock running back. But even with him being so powerful, he's also very quick, fast, and agile. He can either run you over or make you miss without losing much speed or space. He also has some home run speed. If he's past the entire defense, he is not getting caught from behind. His footwork is great, and he can also catch the ball and make big things happen in the passing game. He has creativity to make a lot out of nothing when his blockers let him down, and he also has the mental side of running back down pack. He's a patient runner that sets up blocks well and bursts through a hole as it's opening up. And not when it's already open, which may get clogged. He patiently waits for a hole 
to start opening and burst through it at the right time to get the maximum amount of yards. He's also pretty decisive and he uses his great ability to cut, to change gaps and hit holes with burst. And he uses his cutting ability to change directions on a dime. He can also combine all of his skills and string them together to create highlights. He is the complete running back, not the negatives. He's not a great route runner. Only routes he ran on tape were flats, wheels, and screens. Maybe he has the ability to run more, but there's no evidence to prove this as such. He also has the occasional drop pass. He can get to the edge quickly, but he isn't top tier at getting around the edge like Chris Thompson. He's way better at getting out there than who people compare him to, Marshawn Lynch, but he's not top tier at it. I would also like for him to get more consistent with his pass pro technique. There's tape of him pass protecting well and improving over time, but he still does not do so as consistently as I would like for him to protect Alex Smith with his long-term deal that we gave. And lastly, with his aggressive, angry running style, there is a negative side. He is not afraid of contact, but I would like for him to avoid it when possible. He needs to utilize his agility and shiftiness more often, and I also don't like him using his head as a weapon when running people over. He leads with the crown of his head at times, and that can be very dangerous. He needs to get his pad level lower and keep his head up a little. Now my projection. When he returns to the field in 2019, he will be our best running back. He was going to be our best running back, well, the most talented at least, this year already. But we have to wait another year to see him go out there and prove it. But when he comes back, he will be our premier running back that will make a deadly duo with Chris Thompson and strike fear in the NFC East for years to come. Looking forward to Darius Geis' return. Can't wait for him to start getting his 1,000 yard seasons. Thank y'all for staying with me even though it took me almost three weeks to get the next film session out. Been very busy, but this next film session, Deron Payne, will be out very soon. I already have all of my notes, all of my film breakdown written down. I just have to record it and edit it. So that will be out very soon after this. Very soon after that, I will be bringing y'all my roster predictions. I will do it by position groups. And as always, thank y'all for watching the video. Make sure y'all dolomite fake punch that like button. Favorite subscribe, I'll subscribe back. I'm very excited for the season. Can't wait to watch this preseason game tomorrow. I'll be front row and center on my computer and my TV, watching it from as many angles as possible. And again, thanks for the view. Catch y'all later. I'm out.